In the beginning stages of drying, especially in sunny conditions, the temperature inside the beans reaches the same levels as in fermentation, and with liquid trapped inside the seeds, chemical changes continue to occur. This is why it's best to think of drying as an extension of fermentation. By limiting the drying process through gradual or intermittent exposure, chemical reactions continue to occur and acetic acid produced during fermentation is able to evaporate. The moisture content will equilibrate each night and the drying process will be more even. The differences in both fermentation duration and drying rate are part of the reason some origins are known for bright and fruity notes and others are appreciated for their deep base cocoa notes. Typically, slower drying produces cacao with strong base cocoa notes and low acidity. It's usually best to stop fermentation and spread the beans to dry in the morning to provide the opportunity for drying throughout the whole day in case weather conditions are cloudy or mixed. On the first day, if it's hot and sunny, it may be sufficient to dry for only an hour or two or until the external surfaces of the beans are no longer wet but rather tacky or semi-dry to the touch. Beans should be vigorously raked or mixed by hand at least once an hour or more frequently to ensure even exposure. A second reason that raking is so important on the first day when the beans are still wet is to smooth out the remaining pulp fibers on the exterior surface of the beans. This is especially important if beans are to be shipped in hermetically sealed grain pro sacks. If it's rainy or cloudy, it will be necessary to spread the beans out in as thin a layer as possible and leave them exposed all day. Continue the gradual exposure for drying on the second and third day, and from the fourth day onwards, exposure can be all day until the moisture content reaches 7 or 7.5%. Dry cacao should be stored on pallets in a well-ventilated warehouse or storage shed. Ideally, cacao should be allowed to age or breathe for two to three months, which if shipping in poly or jute sacks will happen incidentally during shipping and receiving. But if using grain pro sack liners, it's critical to allow aging before sealing the sacks. In any case, dry cacao is hygroscopic and will absorb moisture from the ambient air over time, especially in humid tropical climates. So it's important to check stored cacao for moisture at least every month and before exporting and redry the cacao for at least a day before final packaging. To complicate the matter, it's not possible to have a fixed protocol for drying, as the vagaries of weather have a profound effect. The local environment will have a strong influence on the infrastructure required and techniques employed to produce a good result. It's helpful to consider microclimate effects when deciding where to build drying facilities. Choose locations that receive full sun throughout the day, are well ventilated and exposed to prevailing wind or breeze. 